everybody. This is it. The moment everybody's been waiting for. Uh, it's the middle of January. It is technically a Wednesday when I'm recording this. You may be hearing this on a whole different day, on a whole different week. Who knows when I drop this? But uh, it is Wednesday, January 19th. I got the man to myth, the legend himself, your nerd, Duke Hawkins, hanging out with me at FTO. Uh, <laughs> your nerd. How's it going, man? I'm good, bro. How about you? I'm not too bad, man. I'm ready to talk about this. And uh, you know what? Usually I start out just asking people questions about like like what they're doing, like uh, how do you get to, like your page the way it is, like why you put the content you pick. What well, is Wednesday, dude? It's Wednesday. Hump like, day. Like you know, you know what today is though. Like, you know, New yeah, yeah, day. it's hump day. What was that? What day is it? New comic day. That's, That's my dude. About. That's what hey, I'm talking about. Hey, and hey. You are the man like who talks about New Comic Book Day quite often, which is part of the reason why you are here talking to me right now, because like your your love of comic books is uh is is unmatched by a lot of folks. Like you love comics. Yes. And Thank I, you, bro. I gotta ask, like, what are your top five picks for this week? Ooh, top five? Top mm. ooh. Yeah, ooh. I give you give you a long list to talk okay, about. Okay, 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 okay. I'm uh, no particular order, right? No particular yeah, order. Go, just go nuts. All right. Newbie and Amazon's number one. That's number one from this week. Um, Wait, they, they got a spinoff of Nubia already? Yeah, Nubia and the Amazons, bro. That joint is top. There it is. No, that no, one, wow. ooh, top five. Moon Knight. Moon Knight is, yeah. was great this week. Um, dang, what was it? What else came out? Moon Knight. They were really hyping know. out that new show. I know uh, I got a list while you think about it. I see like the Detective Comics, The Amazing Spider-Man, Nightwing, Wonder Woman, The Avengers, issue number 52, Not Venom. Really. <laughs> Hulk. Venom was cool. Hulk Monster was really Revolution. good. Yeah. Miles was okay. It's getting better. Miles was okay. Uh, Superman, Son of Kal-El. Uh, that, that one Marvel was Republic. cool. The Superman joint was kind of like a buffer, like in between type story. Okay. But uh, okay. what a uh, oh the Black Man, and Black Man and the Aquaman both came out today, and those both of those stories was fire. Oh, and Icon and Rocket came out today. I totally forgot about those. Icon and Rocket. Yeah, from the Milestone Universe, Earth M. That came out today. Yeah, number five. There I think it is. Number, there number five it is. Number four. Yeah. Are, are they like? Are they like in a relationship with this whole story? Or is no, no, like- they're not like in a relationship. The, the cover is very misleading. They talk okay. in the comic book, like they interact, but it's not like even like a couple type thing. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't think Rocket will like Static very much. Uh, Ro- Rocket, Rocket is very, very hood friendly. Like she. Uh, oh, bro, they don't really, they don't really get along too much. They, yeah. they, they, they just interact in one little part in the comic, and they didn't really get along too. much. Much. Virgil, Virgil's more one of those uh, like uh, nose in a book kind of guy. Like, but he like he likes the culture of blackness. Rocket is more of a like she's she's a Megan Stallion type. Like, <laughs> like, I, like you know, no shade. I love Megan Stallion. But like, Facts. like that's that's Rocket though, dude. Right? Like that's her that's her entire mo. Facts, but yeah, they they the cover is very misleading. But that drum was definitely dope. That one was fire. But is yeah. It, is that is that like a is that one of your main focuses right now? Is like the the milestone and like the DC like uh, the the black characters like uh, when you see like Duke when you see Static when you see like other characters like Anubia doing their thing. I guess like you I bet you're a big fan like you're a floor also right like uh, yeah. Is that is that like what what was really like captivating you right now when it comes to DC? Oh, a hundred percent. Because like DC right now for me is doing a great job of just representation yeah. and then because like for a minute i just want stories that is with black characters like not so much like black trauma not no slave stories all right, that right. stuff and then so just dope black characters new characters too and dc been making a, a whole bunch of them and that's oh, your that's time. been a yeah, lot yeah. bro and that's been that's really been fueling like my love for comics lately like duke nubia uh tim fox uh yeah, yeah. Aquaman, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like every, like uh, who I'm missing a couple, even Black Manta, even getting his own comic, and like, like his story is so detailed and layered. Black Manta, like he like he goes with his father's struggles, who is now like his his onboard AI, which is kind of like Alfred and Batman in a way. Like his his story is like is very complex in a way. Yo, and now in the new comic, you basically learn that he is from an old tribe of Atlanteans. Whoa. Like he descends from like an old tribe of Atlanteans. So they give him even more layers and stuff. Oh like yeah. Oh, it, it go deep. It go deep, bro. Oh. Like that Black Man story is going deep, deep. And like that's that's one of the few comics you talk about on your page. Like on, on, mostly on your TikTok and your Instagram, you talk. 
you talk a lot about the Black Manta. You talk a lot about Nubia also. Like, in, is it is it the writing of the character that, that really gets to you? Is it the artwork that like that really captivates you? Like, what is it about like you know uh, these new DC stories that like, you're getting right now that really like brings it home for you? For number one, is they're being written by like women and people of color. For yeah. number one, that's the first thing. Especially the Aquaman story is being written by Brandon Thomas, who was like. He was like one of the artists, like, I mean, writers, like up and coming. He wasn't like doing like crazy big stuff. And I was like following him. And then he just started getting mad work, like crazy work. And then so his work with Aquaman is fire. It's the writing and also the more so with Black Manta than the other ones. But Black Manta's art is just dope. Like uh, Nubia's art is dope, too. I think that one fits the comic. Aquaman's is okay it's cool but it's okay but yeah more it's so a, it's a more cartoony in a way the Aquaman. Yeah, yeah yeah definitely it's not, not a bad more thing but definitely more cartoon a lot, a lot of bubbly kind of art to it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel that. I bubbly like that yeah, yeah. i feel like like you know when you see like their muscle it looks kind of like you know it looks like, like a cartoon like something you see on cartoon network and nickelodeon kind of stuff but, yeah, like, especially you know, their their faces too. Their faces mm-hmm. definitely really look cartoony. Yes, yes, it does. Again, not a bad thing, but like that's definitely the vibe I get from it. Yes, definitely. And like we're talking about DC right now, I'm gonna switch over and talk about like talk about news just a little bit. And uh, no. the DC uh, SVP and GM Daniel Cherry is like officially leaving DC. Comics. I just saw that. I literally yeah. just saw that early while I was at work. Yo, I just saw that. And like he he is the one like, who brought a lot of these like like POC characters like to the line. Like he put like the Yara floor. He made like the he like he helped like produce the the fear state. He helped produce like a uh, like the future of all these DC characters. State. We get to see all these these like these different variations of characters and he's leaving. Like how do you feel about that? Me, so honestly, I just gotta wait and see what happens because like right now where dc's leading towards it seems like it's i'm with it like we're especially like the comic books right if if we're talking about the comic books where it's leading i'm 100 percent with it because it just seems like they're really ready to take these new legacy characters and put them in the just forefront put them in the forefront because yeah, i yeah. just posted something today which is very cryptic which is uh Justice League number number seventy five, where you see all the head guys, like all the head superheroes, like Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, are all yes. killed off. They're all dead. Like in, like uh, I think it's, it's uh, Joshua Will- Williamson who took yes. over after Bendis. Like he's writing yes. this story and coming off all these characters. You think like like with Cherry leaving and like this story is coming out, like it, it'll affect this story at all? Like or like you think like like it's still gonna be like something like something to take note of? I don't think it'll affect it because it seems like very planned. Like, if you've been, like, reading, like, the different comics and all that, it right. seems very planned. So, I don't think it'll affect it. I think these things are kind of already set in motion. So, like, I don't think it'll affect it. But especially with the death of the death of the Justice League, like, I was reading an article about it. And they talked, the way they were saying was how, you remember when Death of Superman came out, like, after, like, three months, it, there was no Superman comics. None. And then so he they they was basically saying like after this comic there they won't be a Justice League comic for a good little bit. Wow. So do they doing like the, the the Superman slash Wolverine death kind of thing where like we like they take a break from making any story that involve these it's characters. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's cool. what they said in the article. He was like, yo, he wants this to have the same feel as Death of Superman. Wow. And so That's he did it say it say only one of them is surviving. Only one person is surviving to come back and tell the story. Who do you think that's so, gonna be? I think Black Canary. I think it's gonna be Black Canary. I don't know why. I just it just he's, seems he's like a bad dude, yeah. Yeah, but it seems like you know, she'd be the one to tell the story. You feel me? Yeah, like I feel like she would be the one to survive. Cause I for, I think they said the people that are going is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Black Canary. John Stewart, Green Lantern, mm-hmm. Martian Manhunter, Zatanna, and I believe Hawk Woman. So Kendra, Kendra's dying too. Okay, either Hawk Woman or Hawk Man. I believe I could have had that wrong. I got to check, but yeah, they're all going to fight like these this army that's in the other part of the universe, and then they gonna die, and then somebody's gonna come back and tell the story, and I can't wait. It, just, it sounds like you know. 
I, I wouldn't call like what they're doing is like uh, giving this a Marvel treatment because like we know these characters, the new characters, the new generation of superheroes like Simon Bass, Jessica Cruz, uh, Jonathan Kent, uh, Calder. We know all these characters are they they don't follow the same ideology as say like you know Clark, Bruce, and Diana, but uh, they do like have a code of their own that they follow. And right. I, I think it, I think it is time like to see what that code looks like on on like on on paper and putting it out there for the fans to see. But uh, do you think it'll be well received having my, like you know the the head the head people that we've seen for over eighty years in the comics like you know take a step back and let like this new generation take over? Do you think like that's going to be accepted among fans? This is the problem. This is the problem right here. He's about to lay it down, everybody. Comic book fans is fickle. Like they are so fickle, bro. Like they, like they don't they want. They want new stuff, but then they don't want no change. Like it's like it's like, come on, man. Like I, to tell you the truth, I don't even know what comic book fans would think of this. Like to tell you, they just so fickle. Like, bro, Batman and Superman been around for eighty plus years. Yeah. Let them die. Let, let them, die. them die for a good amount of time, and let these new heroes shine. And then people, yo, and then. Also, bro, let's just be honest. Some old G comic book fans are hella racist. Like, Agreed. they just Agreed. they just don't want nothing besides white male white superheroes. Male. Mm-hmm. You feel like me? White women to be subservient to them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, bro, like they and then they always pass like they they pass they dislike for a hero because some uh, reason, but you always hear them say the same black characters. You yeah. feel me? So oh, it's yeah, like, Black Adam's pretty cool. You guys like heard of John Stewart? He's been around for a long time. Yeah. All yeah. That, all that all that same crap. Yeah. Like, bro, like, come on, man. So, like, I don't really know. I think there is a new generation of comic fans that definitely like these changes and want these changes. But you know, old comic book fans is fickle. Like, they so fickle. That's the I, problem. I hear that. Like, I, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. Like, I really don't. Like, uh, I, I think they are fickle. I think that it's hard for them to make up their mind. I even think uh, one of the few black writers at DC Comics talked about this, uh, Christopher Priest, mentioned this uh, not only to, like, DC on his Twitter, but, like, to, like, the fans also. Like, like a lot of the fans get pissed off because, like, uh, they say they want X, Y, and Z, but they're not even reading the comics. So, like, why would you keep, like, catering to them? So, you know, like, I hear you. I hear you completely. I really do. So yeah, that it be the ones that's not read comics that be they're, so they're, mad. They're so loud. Yeah, they're the loudest. I agree. Completely. It's like you not supporting with your pocket. So why does it even matter to you? <laughs> uh let's take a let's take a take a little break from uh from DC and talk about uh talk about Marvel a little bit. Switch it over. Marvel had like some changes going on also. Like Spider Man's going uh Spider Punk. You see Rob Liefeld coming back with uh with uh, Deadpool, you see uh, one of the, the Avengers members get a new transformation. Like uh, there's, there's there's a lot of stuff happening in in the Marvel universe, and I got I gotta tell you, me personally, like I'm not as impressed with what's happening at Marvel as say that I am with DC. Like that could be my biases. That could be the fact that like like Marvel hasn't really impressed me since. Uh, since since Deadpool like tried to kill the entire Marvel universe, like it could be like, <laughs> like a lot a lot of different things. Like why like I'm not really I feel like like Marvel jumped the shark a little bit. Like but like you are still a very big avid Marvel reader. Like uh, so, yeah. what are your thoughts on Marvel comic books right now? So my thoughts on Marvel like they have some really really good stories. Like Daredevil, Moon Knight, Hulk has been okay. incredible. I give you like, that. Like it, being it, Daredevil was cool. Yeah. Yeah. But as the universe as a whole, it's like I don't really know what the aim is going. Right. You know, I don't I don't really know because like DC, I, you can kind of see that. But mm-hmm. Marvel as a whole, I don't really know where the aim is going. They're kind of introducing new people, but not introducing yeah. new people at the same time. It's 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 kind of weird. Like I don't know, but they still have some really good stories. And I also one of my problems with them is like they're not really they're not really doing the whole giving more black character shine. Like Miles just seems to be the only one that has his own title right now. So it's kind of like, like it looks like he's being pigeonholed as like being like you know the poster child for blackness. At Marvel. Yeah, and I get like a room they don't want because even Miss Marvel, I haven't really seen her out in the front very much lately either. Right? You would think after the show. Yeah. 
and, and then uh, also, who, who's who's the new CEO there? Do you, do you remember who's like the new CEO of Marvel? At Marvel, Marvel? no, I do not remember. And if it's, I did, uh, I'll probably forget his name. It's uh, I don't know. He's a white dude. He uh, he uh, lived in Japan for a while, and he took over after Axel left. Okay. And, I forget his name, but like he is a very ninety approach kind of guy. He's the one who brought us like the X Men ninety two. He brought us the uh, the new the new. He brought an onslaught back. He also brought us uh, the Heroes Reborn story. Like he put all that stuff into works to bring back for the fans. And like like uh, did any of that work for you? Did any of like like any of that stuff like get you like in the mode like to to go back to Marvel and, like and get very pumped up for it? Like as it mostly just like the the smaller stuff like you said before, like Daredevil and Moon Knight. And like all like the other smaller characters, it's more so the smaller stuff because they do have a big event right now, Devil's Reign. That's pretty good, but uh, Heroes Reborn. I like when I read what that was coming out. I was, I was like, okay, this sounds dope. And when I read like the first two issues, I was like, okay, this is trash. So I stopped reading it. <laughs> so that definitely gave me hype. But it's funny that you said that, right? That like he comes with the '90s feel approach because. Right. I've been reading some of the like reading the uh some of the side comics of Marvel, right? And so I was thinking today with Moon Knight and comparing it kind of with like old Moon Knight comics, right? right? right. And so it's like each comic is kind of like an anthology, kind of it's like a new night. It's kind of like a new night, a new villain, some difference happening. And that's how the old comics were. And like some of the comics now seem like that. Cause you know, with DC, you have like the series, each comic is something that's happening in the whole series. Right, right? right. But as far as like Moon Knight, it'd be like something different this night. Yeah, it's a whole series, but it'd be like something different this night is happening. Moon Knight hands it. Kind of like uh, if you watch like Criminal Minds or Bones or something like that. It'd be something new they handling, but it still go along with the story. And I wonder if he's the one that kind of implemented feel. Because I was thinking today, I really like that a lot. Yeah, well, I, I hear what you're saying. I feel like a lot of that that anthology-based mindset story started with, with Axel, because he started the whole Marvel Now. And like uh, his oh, entire approach was, after every 25 issues, you restart and give give like the comic book a brand new ish number one. And like I feel like that that kind of like started the whole like anthology, which uh, which since you bring up Moon Knight, Moon Knight is dropping a Moon Knight anthology pretty soon, also. Yes, I just seen that the black, yeah. white, and blood, blood. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Those series have been dope. I think I had the Deadpool one. That one was fire, and I think the Electric one is out right now too. So like, so exactly, you like you get it. Like so, they they are like actually also creating the anthologies, but uh, I feel like this is gonna be like a proper anthology, like similar to. It's called Black, White, and Blood, but like it really reminds me when I see this, like Batman, Black and White. It makes me think about that when I see like Definitely. you see that resemblance too, right? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, yeah. and this isn't the first time that like you know uh, DC and Marvel has like like shared ideas and like and kind of like copy each other like from what they do. Like, <laughs> Not I feel like a, a time honored thing since like since like eighty years ago when they when they started this whole thing out. So yeah, you get that, but. Uh, yeah. Like I, I would want to see like something cohesive. Like uh, you were saying before about how DC sticks to you know they have they have what they're doing. They 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 solve crimes. Like they solve crimes in space. They solve crimes on Earth. They stop bad guys. Like bad guys is like always trying to one up themselves to stop the good guys and have like you know either planetary goal or you know eco terrorism or like resurrect their beloveds or you know just get some money in their pocket. That seems but like like that's the whole thing with DC though. Like it's like it's like a whole right. reverse like a societal and capitalistic and political ideologies being flipped on his head and changed in a way like you know to suit like the bad guys and DC are like the, the altruistic people who fix those problems. I don't see that with Marvel. I don't know. I don't know like what Spider Man's purpose is anymore. I don't know what Captain Marvel's purpose is anymore. I don't know what Steve Rogers' purpose is anymore. Like, do you see the purpose in these characters in like in Marvel? So. Hmm. So it's kind of hard to say that because I don't really see the grand scale of everything. Like I'm still like I don't see where everything's kind of headed. Like I think the one that I see like people talking about is like X Men. Like that X Men apparently X Men has like a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. I'm not really caught up on anything X Men, but they got a whole bunch of stuff in their type of universe that's going on. But as far as like you know everybody else. I don't know. It's weird because Spider Man is like in a weird place because you know Ben Riley's the new Spider Man and he's kind of backed by like a whole corporation right now and they're like suing Miles and all that. Like it's it's a whole crazy thing with that. 
And it's like, and then I think only thing I really see is like New York really like with the street level is like, that's really what I see like coming ahead, especially with like Devil's Reign. So I see everybody, the little side pockets I see, I, I understand, but I don't understand the grand scheme okay. of the whole universe of Marvel. You get what I'm saying? I get you. Like they're like the Daredevil Devil's Reign. Like basically Kingpin is taking over New York and he's basically outlaw and mass. Like he's saying, Y'all done. So uh so basically that's you know uh Daredevil. Like a simple yeah. War 2.0, yeah. Yeah, it's ba- so you know that's that's basically Daredevil. Um Spider-Man. Moon Knight probably gonna get involved. Yeah. Uh I know Luke Cage was involved in the last one. Everybody, everybody that's in New York is basically in this basically and then so what they trying to do in the comic is make luke cage the mayor of new york and overthrow him (laughs) uh that sounds a little close to home all right like we got this comic though so you know like uh (laughs) i mean you know (laughs) all right like let's see how that goes is jessica cruz uh, jessica jessica jones is she still a part of that whole story with luke cage or like have they yeah they married they still married. married. Okay. They together. Yeah. All right. Because I, I, ha- I haven't been following Marvel since 2016 for reasons I won't talk about on this podcast right now. But yeah, <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to know what I'm talking about, listen to previous episodes. I talk about uh, people who work at Marvel and like it's like the CEO of the company. So yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. Like it seems like like um, it seems like right now like you're favoring DC because like, they're giving you like they're giving you personally what you want to see. They're giving you like you know, like black representation, black creators, yeah. black artists. They like, give you like all that stuff that you're looking for, like and putting on the on a pedestal essentially. But uh, it seems like Marvel is trying like to find their footing, like and, like you would go back to them like if they they find out what what else they're doing. Is there is there anything else like uh, in both companies that you would want to switch out and change and like make 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 it uh, more accessible for you and other readers like yourself at both companies? So, oh, this is actually a very good question, actually. That's a really good question. So at DC, I think about this all the time. What I would change for DC is Marvel, if you see, whenever they have a movie, TV show, anything come out, there's a comic that comes out right around the same time, right. if not before or right after. Right. And like DC, they don't be doing that, bro. Like they, I think they've gotten a little bit better because you know, when they added Peacemaker to the comic book and stuff like that, like that's added much, a lot of stuff from the new Suicide Squad into the comic and stuff. But like, they don't do a good job of when popular things come out that, you know, the general public would see of putting a comic out at the same time. Batman, of course, he always got comics and he always gonna have movies. But like, I think they need to do a better job with that. Like Naomi, like her show's coming out right now and Naomi season two is coming out later on. But I feel like that should have been around this same time. Like that should have been around this same time. And the Blue Beetle movie coming out, they have a comic that didn't win this stupid ass voting competition, but they definitely should put that out around the same time. That's one thing I would change for DC. Marvel, it would just be more black people. (laughs) (laughs) Play it simple, cut and dry. Just play it simple. <laughs> just more black people. Like I don't really care because with Marvel, I love the street level. I love the street level universe, yeah. and, and I love like, it. Like they're always talking about the same ones. They talk about Luke Cage. They talk about uh, Miles Morales. They talk about what other black street level Marvel character, like women even that are out there. Like I can't even think of one off the top of my There's head. There's Misty like, Knight, but she's only in there every now and then. <laughs> where where has she been? Like you know, she she had on the for a while, but like you know. She was just in somebody comic. She appeared, was it in Daredevils? It may have been Daredevils, but it was just brief. Yeah, and last time I seen it was in like, you know, 2016 with Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson. Yeah, and when, yeah, true. Yeah. And I, yeah, oh that's yeah. She, that's, when she, that's when she was like really prevalent for a while. Like she was very, very well talked about in that role. Like, and they had like an interest in each other also. Like, and she was like, she was on a hype where she got like a whole new comic with a brand new artist and like they did not capitalize on that like i, I hear what you're saying and i feel like a lot a lot of the, the superhero is type characters is like usually spectrum blue marvel um hmm uh, either one of them have a comic out maybe, right now either maybe war machine but like to me war machine is a little sus in the comic books but you know <laughs> i'm just hmm. Ro- Rody, I'm i don't i don't trust Rody. and like the i'm not really shot, in fact that he shot up with captain marvel who is also sus in the comic books yeah no thank you 
yeah, I'm not really a fan of uh war uh war machine or uh Carol. Yeah, Captain Marvel. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Since, since since ever since like the first Civil War happened, like by Bendis, like I was not on the fan. Okay, like she she attacked Julia Carpenter. Like I'm like no thank you. Like that's your best friend. You're gonna attack her because she's wearing a mask. Like in front of her kid, no less. Like uh, Carol, what? The, where are your priorities, man? No thank you. Yeah, I just never cared for her character ever. She's rude, dude. She's she's not <laughs> she's not a nice person. Like I get like you know you, like like you know that's a whole trope amongst women. But like if you read her stories, Carol Danvers is not a nice person. Like she does not give a crap about what you think about who you are. Manners means nothing to her. And like she. She's always trying to prove a point that she's better than everybody else. Like, we got it. Like, you're one of the most OP characters in this universe. Dial it back a little bit, dude. And you kind of just explained the whole story to Civil War II. I mean, this, that's, <laughs> that's what she does, dude. That's what she does. And, like, you know, I do get, like, you know, uh, they do have, like, this, this latent story with, like, with her and her son. Like, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but, like, if you know the story, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But, like, something happened with her, her and her son. He's a time traveler, and he did something horrible to his mom. And like I feel like that that is resonating with her character, but never talked about in the comics. True, I did not know that. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's it's awful. If you know what I'm talking about, go check it out. I'm not gonna talk about it on the show right now, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yo nerd, like you you are like all over the comic book world, man. Like you follow this like with a t- fine tooth comb. I'm pretty sure you know about like the Sandman Universe series with uh Jane Tinney in the fourth. Like with that coming back, I know Boom Studio got like a Magic the Hittering the Hidden Plane Walker series that are also coming out. Like, there's a lot of stuff, like, even in the indie stuff that's coming out. And um, I don't think indie comic books give, like, a fair shake. But I'm pretty yeah. sure, like, you know, you got your opinions about that, too. Like, anything you want to say about the indie comic image, Dark Horse, uh, uh, any other, like, like uh, Aftermath, any other, like, any other indie comic book companies out there that are well-known among fans? Any, any suggestions or comments you got about that? So with indie comics, they don't get their just due. But I think that's going to change. This is my bold prediction. In the next, in the next few years, with all these streaming services and people getting into like you know comic book content and more so like you know DC and Marvel making these things popular, I think more people are going to look into some of these indie comics and looking to making them TV series and shows. Because I've heard like Bitter Root. Uh, that comic I heard, uh, Regina King, I believe, King make a film out of it, yeah. is making something out of that. Like, I think that a lot of these indie comics, especially I saw a while back that Boom Studios had like a had like a contract with Netflix or somebody, wow. and then so you know they do comics that could lead to you know more well, comics. Time for like a Magic the Gathering TV show, yeah. Facts, cause like, yeah, they are doing a new Magic the Gathering comic. I yeah. I'm not reading that, but I did see that was out. But you know, I mean, I I would I would be shocked if they did not do them. As many people that used to play Magic back in the day, I would be shocked if they didn't do something for it. I I tried it, bro, but then I just went back to Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> you are you are showing your age, my friend. <laughs> you are definitely showing your age. you you grew up in the two thousands for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, anything else you want to say to people? I always ask this question every time I have someone on the show. Like, you've been doing this for almost a year, like, talking about your opinions, putting, like, your thoughts out there, and, like, always in a way that, like, you know, like, doesn't try, like, to step on anyone's toes. You just want to get your thoughts out there and have people hear what you say. And you've been mm-hmm. doing this for almost, from what I've seen, almost a year. Is there anything you want to say to the people who've been, like, supporting you, having your back, propping you up, and, like, just giving you that support you've been looking for? Anything you want to say to those folks out there? Hey, yeah, for real, for real. Those, everybody, like you, people, uh, I think his name is Artis- Autistic Nerd. Uh, it's a couple of people, uh, Manny Reese Comics. You're wearing a Blur like, Alliance shirt right now. Yeah, yeah, b- yeah, Blur, uh, Black Nerd Alliance, them, uh, uh, Black Comic Lords, this group on Facebook. Like, it's been really dope, because like you said, I've been doing this for like a year, and then I just really... I had a lot of opinions about comic book stuff and then none of my friends are really into comic book stuff like that. So like, I, so it's kind of like, you know, for me to like talk to and also get people hip to that don't really read comics, like get them hip to stuff that's going on. So, you know, they have stuff to talk about, but 
since starting this, all the people that I've like met, like especially you, it's been dope as hell. Like just talking to people and about comics from all over the world and all that. And then just, well, not really the world, but the United States. But like, it's been really dope. And it's been, uh, I've been getting a lot of love, which is definitely appreciated. It is definitely appreciated. And it keeps me wanting to keep doing this and meet more people like me and you, like we gonna do a whole series with comics. Like I can't wait for that. I can't wait. (laughs) Yeah, like it's just gonna be fun just to chop it up and talk about comics. And then like, I just wanna thank everybody that's been, you know, supporting me and watching me and, you know, keep supporting me and watching me and it's gonna be fun. (laughs) Right on, man, I appreciate that. Like you're a cool dude. I like what you do. Uh, Your nerd can be found on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Twitter has a different handle though, right? Yeah, at Snapback for a crown. But if you search at your nerd, I'll still come up. <laughs> no, wait, hold on, back up. I, what's that handle again? It's at Snapback for a crown. Before I grew my hair raw, I used to wear a lot of hats. So. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Like it. That's another thing you guys need to know about your nerd also. Like his hair is constantly changing. Constantly. 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 Always, I, like I keep, I keep thinking like he's gonna die one day. I feel like that's gonna be like a twenty twenty five kind of thing. Maybe, maybe like in the far future, he's gonna. Yeah, I was like, thinking like, about it. I was thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet, but I was thinking about it. Right on, man. Like, make sure you guys check out your nerd. Make sure you check out like all his stuff. Like, uh, his TikTok is like definitely where it's at. And like the second place I would check out is his Instagram. Like, he really puts a lot of work and effort into like all of what he does. I'm always here for it. Always got like great opinions. Uh, he and Grace Rudolph do not get along, so make sure you <laughs> make sure you do not interact. I, I ain't got no problem with Grace. I ain't got no problem with Grace. She just be saying some crazy shit sometimes. She says some wild things, dude. Like, yeah, she's like she's like Marvel comic books right now. She just like says up, see what sticks to the wall. I I will definitely give you that. She do just see if that stick. Uh, let's no, see that didn't work. that one. That didn't work either. Yeah. <laughs> She used to be on point. I, I, I would definitely give her like she used to like say something that was very credible. I was always like listening to what Grace had to say next. But like yeah, the late, it's been been a little weird for Grace. But you know, and I she feel- she do still do say some stuff. You know, from time to time, that's on point. Like she do give some good shit from time to time. Yeah, right but on. then there's other times <laughs> she just be wild with it. You feel Ooh. me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grace, where did you get that one from? Like who's your source of that one? <laughs> I hope, I hope I can chat her up with you someday. I feel like that'd be a good conversation. But uh great. <laughs> I gotta make that happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh this is the FNR Talk. If you listen to this right now, make sure you subscribe and follow. Uh check me out wherever you can, FNR Talk. The, the different links are in the show notes. You're gonna see your nerd uh comments in like the descriptions in the show notes also. There's gonna be a video of this popping probably the same day you see this or see this uh podcast here also. So make sure if you wanna see us talk visually it will be exclusively on youtube probably on mine and his as well uh i'm d make sure you check me out until next time you guys take it easy later man peace y'all